Hey, this is Rob. Uh, someone on the forums was asking about how they could make something that looks like a twisted polygonal vase. So um, what I'm imagining they mean is that it would be almost like a hex tube and, uh, and have a twist in it. So let's see if we can try that. And I want to show you how you might do this in, um, in different workspaces in Fusion 360. So I think what they were looking for was to see something in here that would create something like a hex rod or hex cylinder. There isn't such a thing, but we would do that using a sketch. So I'll, cl I'll click uh, Create Sketch here and choose the top work plane. And then there's a command here for creating a circumscribed polygon. So I'll make this polygon uh, three inches and I'll hit OK. And then uh, stop sketch. So at this point, I could just click on it and uh, use either press pull or extrude to pull this up to, let's say, six inches or eight inches. But at this point, there's not a lot I can do. Uh, you would think that I might be able to use the move command. I'll hit M and then just choose this face and uh, rotate it, but that doesn't seem to do what we want. So um, <clears throat> I'll undo, see it added a move command here, but I'll undo with command Z. And instead of um, doing the extrude, I'll undo again. And what I'll do is create a second polygon up above and use the loft, the loft feature to, um, to, to bridge the gap between those two um, profiles. So first thing I'll do is create a construction plane and lift it up uh, eight inches off of that original one. And then I'll create a new sketch on this surface. And I'll use that same circumscribed polygon command. And I'll just make another one that's slightly bigger. So now I've got two here, one above the other. The next thing I want to do is try that loft command. So I'll create loft and just tell it I want to go from that profile to that one. And you can see it worked. Um, and in fact, if I edit that top sketch and kind of twist it a little bit, we should see that there's a twist in it now. I can also, instead of going back and editing that sketch blindly, you know, I can't see what effect it's having when I go back in there uh, because I'm, I'm going back in time before the loft. What I can do is turn on that sketch here and uh, right click on it and choose show dimension. And that way I can actually edit the sketch right from uh, this outside of the sketch. So I'm kind of changing its size. I can also twist it. And so this seems to work, except when it gets to a certain point, it doesn't keep twisting it just kind of is more efficient than that it tries to find the nearest edge so um, so this doesn't quite work unless you only wanted a slight twist so let's go um, let's go back and try and figure out how we can do this I'll hide this body for the moment and make sure the sketches are on and uh, what I'd like to do is use the um, use the loft feature, that loft command that we used before, but I also want some rails so that there's a specific relationship between this point here and this point here. And the way that I do that is by creating lines between them. I'll choose the line command and it needs to be within a sketch and I'll actually put it in this same sketch. I'll click here. And as long as you have in your preferences um, this feature called allow 3D sketching of lines and splines, this will work fine. So I'm actually leaving that kind of two-dimensional view of the sketch by just rotating around. And what I'll do is create lines from this point to this point, this point to this point, and so on. Now I can stop the sketch and edit that loft command by double-clicking on it. And um, now I can choose to add some rails. So I'll click on each of those rails. There's the first one second one, third, fourth, fifth, and sixth. I'll choose OK. And now what we can see is I turn that body back on. Uh, as I rotate this top polygon, it's able to keep, keep twisting. OK, so let's say I've got the twist I want. I guess the last step would be, uh, because this, this person who asked the question is a new user, I'll, I'll continue to actually make this a vase, which would be to use the modify shell command. And uh, if I just click on that top face, I can say the thickness that I'd like it to be, maybe uh, 0.125 inches, and I'll hit OK. And now I've got a vase. It's open on the top and closed on the bottom. I can use the inspect uh, section analysis command, and I'll turn on the origin just so I can select a face here. 
And then when I hit OK, you can see that it's actually made a hollow face-like thing. Okay, so I've created a new design and I'm just going to show you how that same thing might happen using the uh, sculpt mode, sculpt workspace. So again, I'll create a polygon in a sketch and I'll again make that like three inches and hit stop sketch. Now I'll go into sculpt mode, which I can do by choosing create form here and I'll extrude in sculpt mode. So if I choose this uh, set of edges and make it go up whatever whatever dimension I want. Let's say it's 11 inches this time, and then hit OK. You'll see what I've got is basically a similar sort of shape, but it's not actually a solid body. You can see it's a sculpt body here, which is just a bunch of surfaces. I can make it a solid body afterwards, so for now we're working just with um, surfaces. So I'll choose Edit Form here, and what you'll see is that I can actually double click on this edge uh, as long as we've got edges as our selection filter and then just twist it so this works too and um, it's twisting in a certain way you can use you can choose soft modification and change how that works um, if i choose linear there's a different sort of uh, twisting algorithm that it would use and the same with uh, spherical and so we can kind of tweak it without even knowing what all of these options are but you can also change the falloff gradient but for now this is enough information for you to play with I'll hit OK so now I've got this uh, kind of vase made from faces but I need it to be a solid thing if I wanted to say 3d print it or, or uh, produce it in real life in any way so uh, there are a couple ways I can do it I'll show you one here which would be to uh, to use boundary fill so what we need is basically a cap on the top and the bottom of this. We already have a cap for the bottom, which we could use this uh, work plane here, but for the top, we'd need a, uh, another plane. So there are a bunch of different ways I can do this, but I can use an offset plane and uh, say that this is 11 inches away from that one, which is the height that I gave it when I extruded. I'll hit OK. And now I can go to Create, Boundary Fill, choose uh, this surface and this surface and all of these surfaces as the uh, as the planes that kind of enclose this 3d space that I want to make and then I'll choose the um, the checkbox that it gives me and that is oh hold on let's try that again here here and here and then I'll choose the cell in the middle and hit OK and what it's done is it's created a solid body still has the surface body, um, but I can hide that because I don't need it anymore. I also don't need to see that construction plane or the origin right now. So there's my solid body. And again, I could go to modify shell and do that same thing I did before to create a more vase-like thing. So what I've done is I've gone back in time to where I just have the two sketches. I have that original polygon and then I have the other polygon above with the lines connecting uh, from points here to points on the bottom. And here I'll just do the loft inside the patchwork space instead to show you how it's different. So I'll create loft and then um, I'll add some profiles, this top profile and the bottom profile. And then for rails, I'll make sure it's set to rails here and not center line. And I'll just click on each of those rails. So there's one, two, three, four, five, six. I've got six rails set up and I'll hit OK. And you can see it's where it works just like before. And I can just twist here and it will work like it did in the model workspace. So the only difference is now I've got basically, uh, if I had all the sketches, I can see I've just got a surface, surface body. It's a bunch of surfaces just like it was in the uh, in the sculpt mode. So now I can go to create and thicken and just choose these surfaces and give it some thickness. So here it's just negative 0.125. I'll hit OK. And uh, now I've got a solid body. So I didn't add the bottom to it. Um, so maybe I'll go back in time a little bit to where I just had the uh, surface body. And I'll show you another feature of the uh, sculpt work, the patch workspace, which is I can create a patch for the bottom and as long as I click that ring of edges and hit OK it's now created two separate uh, surface bodies. There's one for the outside and then one for the, the bottom. So what I'd want to do at this point is stitch them all together. I'll highlight them all 
and choose the stitch command. Say OK. And now I've got one single surface body that's, um, that's got a top missing, bottom is there. And uh, at this point, I think I'd probably want to do the um, thicken. So create, thicken, and choose all of those faces. I'll choose OK. And what I should get is a solid body now, and I'll still have my uh, surface body remaining. So here's the solid body. If I hide it, I can see there's a surface body that was used to make it. So um, now I've got a vase. I'm not sure about it. I can turn my analysis back on, and there we've got something that looks like a vase again. So there's three different workspaces that you could do this in. You could do it all in the model workspace. You could use T-splines to have more control about how the twist happens, or you can work with surfaces in the patch workspace. Lots of ways to do this. There's probably other ways that I'm not showing you, um, but there's some ideas to get you started.